Hello and welcome to College Russian, where you can learn Russian as if you were in a college classroom. Today's lesson is on palatalization. Palatalization is sort of a crazy thing that happens in Russian that it's really hard for us English speakers to hear and produce. What it is, is when you're making a consonant, you're pushing the middle of, the, of your tongue up to the top of your mouth, otherwise known as your palate, and you're doing this at the same time as you're articulating a consonant. So, for example, we do this in English sometimes. We just don't realize we're doing it. So, for example, say the word minion, minion, right? So that N that's underlined there is being palatalized. If you stop halfway through while you're saying it, you can kind of feel that, like, wow, a huge portion of my tongue is up against the top of your mouth. That's because you're palatalizing that N. So try it again. Minion. Okay? So you can feel how the middle of your tongue is very much up on the top of your mouth. Well, in Russian, not only ends do this, all, a lot of the different consonants do it. So here, we just said minion, and here you're going to hear the palatalization on the N, the underlined N, um, in this word. So let's listen. Dzień. Okay, so you can hear that. This N is the same as this N. It's just at the end of the word, which we don't ever really do in English. The other interesting thing is this D is also being palatalized. Dzień, dzień. So in Russian, almost all consonants can be palatalized. Um, for those of you who like linguistics or uh, phonetics and phonology terminology, this is known as secondary articulation. Palatalization is a form of secondary articulation because you're doing it in addition to to primary articulation. So, for example, the tip of your tongue is up against the back of your teeth, as well as your secondary articulation, which is palatalization, middle of your tongue up against the top of your mouth. Um, so what's important to know is almost all Russian consonants have a palatalized and an unpalatalized version, and you kind of have to know which is which because you can totally change the meaning of a word if you don't palatalize it where you should. However, don't stress too much about it because um, Russians know that this is a hard concept for a lot of foreigners to grasp. And so when they're speaking with you, they're not going to, they're going to understand what you're saying because they're used to foreigners making that mistake. Another note about palatalization is it can happen anywhere in the word. The example I gave you above, the palatalization was at the end, but it, it was also in the beginning. So it can happen anywhere in the, in the word. Going forward, though, we're not going to call these consonants unpalatalized or palatalized. We're going to start calling them hard, which is the unpalatalized version, and soft, which is the palatalized version. Okay, so now we're talking about hardness and softness of consonants, uh, um, also known, known as palatalization of consonants. So I know the question you're asking yourself is, how in the world do I know if a consonant is hard and soft? Well, the good news is that there's an entire system in place. So... Earlier in the alphabet chapter, I had sort of talked about hard vowels and soft vowels. That was slightly misleading. They're not, the vowels themselves are not hard. They just represent the hardness or the softness of the consonant before it. Okay? So, if you see the, these vowels, you can assume that the consonant before it is hard. Okay? So, if you see a, e, o, u, or e you can assume that the consonant before it is hard. If you see any of these, you can assume that the consonant before it is soft. So here we go. Here's the hard version, and then put just a little Y sound in front, and you get the soft version. So ah, ya, eh, ye. O, and its soft counterpart would be yo. U, soft counterpart is you. And here, these two sounds are like a little bit different. The, the putting the Y sound in front doesn't exactly apply here, but they're still considered counterparts of each other. So, E and E. And then the other big thing that indicates softness is Mjakiznak. Mjakiznak. This letter here, the soft sign. So, Mjakiznak literally means soft sign. So, anytime you see this, it doesn't have any sound on its own, but anytime you see this after a consonant, you can assume that that consonant is palatalized or soft. So, let's practice. Um, here are some words. Under, I have underlined a, a, a consonant, and I want you to look at the vowel after the consonant and tell me if the underlined vowel is hard or soft. Here we go. Okay, so look at this vowel to, in, to decide whether this is hard or soft. Good. So V 
here is hard because o is over here in the hard category. So vot, vot. Also, t is also hard because we have nothing here to indicate that this should be soft. There's no soft vowel, there's no miyaki's knock, so we just assume that it's hard. Okay, let's go to the next one. We've got two underlying consonants here. Let's start with the M. Is it a hard M or a soft M? It's hard, and how did you know that? Good, because you know E is over here in this category, so it's pronounced me, me. Okay, let's look at this T. Is it a hard T or a soft T? It's soft. How did you know? Because of miakiznak. You put miakiznak. Miakiznak does not make a sound. It just tells us to palatalize this T. So how would we pronounce? So just this T with the miakiznak would be pronounced t, t. The tip of your tongue is going up against the back of your teeth, and also the middle of your tongue is going up to the top of your mouth. So might, might. Good. Okay, let's look at these two consonants. M. Is this a hard M or a soft M? Soft. Because look, ya is over here in the soft category. How about this T? Is it a hard T or a soft T? Hard. Good. Miata. Miata. How about this one? Is, is this T a hard T or a soft T? Hard. Good. Because U comes from the hard category. And what about this T? Is it a hard or a soft? It's hard. When any time we see a consonant at the end of a word, our default is to assume it's hard, unless proven otherwise by a miakiznak. Okay? So miakiznak is the only thing that can reverse our opinion about whether it's hard or soft at the end of a word. So if it's hard, if it's just a consonant at the end of the word, we assume it's hard. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice hearing the difference. I really wanna emphasize here that if this seems like all really crazy and foreign to you, that's okay. It's going to take you a little while to get where you can even hear the difference between the palatalized and unpalatalized versions, and then it'll take you a little bit longer than that to be able to produce the palatalized and unpalatalized versions. Um, the great thing is, is that Russians know that this is a hard thing for foreigners to do, and so they're totally prepared for you to make mistakes, and they will be able to understand you no matter what, okay? So, here we go. By the, word, by the way, all of these words that I'm about to give you are actual Russian words, and they're only distinguished by the miakiznak in them. So it's pretty fascinating. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out. I'm going to read out either adin, number one, or I'm going to read out dva. And you're listening for palatalization. You're trying to see if you think it's palatalized, like this one, or unpalatalized, like this one. Okay, so all of the ones are going to be the palatalized version, and all of the twos are going to be the unpalatalized version. So I'm going to read it, and you tell me, did you think it was the idin, the palatalized, or the va, the unpalatalized? Here we go. I'm just going to read one of the words. I'm not going to read you both of the words. Here we go. Mat. 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 That was the va, unpalatalized. Okay, so the palatalized version would sound like this, mat, and the unpalatalized version sounds like this, mat. Here we go. Next one. Miel. 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 Okay, so that was the palatalized version. Okay, so here's the palatalized version, miel, and the unpalatalized version, Miel. Miel. Okay. Next. Okay. Bleep. 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 That was the unpalatalized version, the voix. Okay. So the palatalized version would sound like bleep, and the unpalatalized version sounds bleep. Okay. Next. Pil. 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 Okay, so that was palatalized version. Okay, so palatalized sounds like pil, and unpalatalized sounds like pil. Super subtle difference. Super subtle difference. Don't bang your head on a wall if you're if you're not hearing it. Okay, it's going to take some time. K. 
Okay, how about this one? Voin. 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 Okay, that was the palatalized version. Okay, so the palatalized version sounds like voin, and the unpalatalized version sounds like von. Voin. Okay, so palatalization can happen anywhere in the, wor in the word. It's not always represented by miachiznak. Sometimes it's represented by quote-unquote soft vowels. Okay, so for example here, um, we've got a yo. So th because we know that this is a quote-unquote soft vowel, we know that this is a soft consonant, whereas this one we call a quote-unquote hard vowel, so that tells us this is a hard consonant. So as you can see, palatalization can happen in the middle of the word. It's not always represented by miakiznak. It can be represented by vowels as well. So we're going to do the same thing here. You're going to tell me whether you heard the word with the palatalized first consonant or the unpalatalized first consonant. So I'm going to say one, and you tell me. Was it adin or dva? Here we go. Nyos. 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 Good. Palatalized. Dva. Oh, sorry. That should be idean. Number problem there. It is the first one. Nyos. Okay. Next. Mila. 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 Ah, sorry, we've got major number problems here, I apologize. But that was mula, dva. Okay. How about this one? Vol. 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 Good. Unpalatalized. Okay. Lastly. Miata. 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 That was the palatalized one with this quote unquote soft vowel. Okay? And lastly, we're, we're paying attention here to the B's because both of these T's are palatalized because they both have the miyaki's knock afterward. So here we go. Beat. 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 And that was Idzian, the palatalized B. Okay? We're going to go through real fast and read all of these side by side. Nyos, nos. Nila, mila. Viol, vol. Miata, mata. Bit, bit. Bit, bit. Good. Okay, so that's the end of our palatalization lesson. The follow up to this is going to be hardness and softness in spelling, which is going to be really important once you par start putting things into plurals and cases and so on and so forth. So the next le lesson will have hardness and softness in mind and kind of teach you how to start making plurals in Russian. And we'll also teach you about the blasted seven letter r spelling rule, which can kind of make things tricky um, and can kind of confuse you a little bit. But we're going to learn it in the next lesson. Thanks for being here. That's it.